put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version, and the link is in the description box. Captain America 2, The Winter Soldier, in 3D, Moon Review. When Nick Fury is attacked, Captain America finds himself without anyone to really trust, and he is determined to find, find out who attacked Fury and why. He does team up with Black Widow, and the two are now running from quite a substantial enemy and trying to unravel the whole mystery. I, as part of my research for this, I rewatched Three Days of the Condor. And, you know, because it's, it's, it's been said to, they, they, they described that they were trying to do this sort of thing, you know, a, a 70s crime thriller like Three Days of the Condor, Con, Condor, or perhaps, you know, something by Tom Clancy, who, as you can maybe tell, work I enjoy. For those of you who don't read Danish, this is Mirror Image, and this is Games of State. And not, it's not only Tom Clancy's writing that I adore, it's also the pure snark of his commentary on the sum of all fears. But, but yes, yeah, something like what Tom Clancy might have written, or, you know, something like Three Days of the Condor. I didn't quite expect it to be this similar, but that was a rather pleasant surprise. It, trust me, it's, it's, it's not too similar. It's just that that basic, you know, if you just go with, well, you know, someone is attacked and our protagonist finds himself without anyone to trust and trying to find out what's, what's going on. Yeah. And it really, really works for this film. The, the first one was very much this 1940s war movie from the American perspective. So you've got heroism, you've got all this typical army stuff, you know, very jingoistic. And here we have this very contemporary espionage thriller. Where, I mean, I, I say semi thriller, don't worry, this is very much present day. It's just, it's that type of thriller. It's a political thriller, first and foremost, with some amazing action set pieces, but first and foremost, a, a political thriller where some of the, you know, people involved happen to you know, dress in the American flag, or, you know, have a steel arm, or what have you. And, yeah, it, it just, it works incredibly well. It, it helps distinguish itself from the, you know, it, it doesn't feel like just another of, of these many, it's, it's good when these, the, the Marvel-verse films distinguish themselves other than what is the lead character and what number in the series is this. And yeah, this can be watched and enjoyed as a, you know, an espionage thriller. Now, when I say it's, it's very much, you know, the current day world politics and this, there is some scathing commentary about the whole, like, We've already seen some, you know, some commentary on, let's say, American foreign policy. 
in the in the Marvel verse, in the cinematic Marvel verse, and this one goes in and addresses the Bush doctrine, the preemptive strikes and mass surveillance, and yeah, it actually really I I kind of worried that it would be one of these movies that kind of promote that you know and say that's it's necessary in order to be safe but it actually does yeah it's it's a bit more realistic than that it's yeah of all the films in the cinematic marvel verse this might be the one that benefits the most from the strong continuity. This or Avengers, and frankly, when when ranking the the overall, maybe Avengers is still better than this. And I still, you know, I still love Avengers. This comes extremely close. Yeah, let's go. With Avengers is still number one. This is number two. And it's really close, and it really, I really didn't think, I mean, I still love Iron Man 3, and Thor The Dark World was a ton of fun, but this one just does so, so well. I'm not going to give away too much of, of why, but if you're at all into these movies, watch this movie. You, you can thank me afterwards. Just, and, and try not to get in any spoilers or such. Now, the... Let's see, we have a... There's, there's a nice sort of dichotomy between, you know, with, with Steve and Natasha, Captain, Captain America and Black Widow, you have this odd couple kind of thing where he's very much soldier. He's not stupid, but he is soldier. And she's very much spy. So it's very much kind of they have different ways of approaching problems. One of the first scenes is, you know, you, you see the the trailers with, you know, Cap jumps out of, you know, they 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 banter back and forth. Cap mentions, you know, he used to be a member of a barbershop quartet. Oh, Steve, you are so very white. And yeah, they they banter, and then he jumps out of this moving plane. And it is a little surprising that he doesn't, you know, land at you know like a a world expo and then you know shows off his tech, but whatever. That leads to the scene of, you know, taking back a, a freighter. And we see Steve very carefully and non-lethally taking out guards. And Natasha kind of jumps in I mean, she's not, she's not creating a huge amount of, like, she isn't, she isn't drawing attention to herself, but she is not exactly holding back. Like, if, if you're in her way, sir, you're going to be dead. That's just, that's just how it is. And they, over the course of the film, they somewhat affect her, you know, she... And Shield and Nick Fury very much about fighting dirty, and you know, they don't necessarily have. I think Scarlett Johansson described in an interview, in an interview as her moral center moves, or maybe it was someone else. And you know, she's she doesn't have a ton of integrity, but she at the same time wants to affect. Steve in, you know, making him a little less stiff and, you know, Steve might give her some more integrity, but, you know, I mean, we know that Steve is a Boy Scout. Heck, he is the original Boy Scout. He was a Boy Scout back when gays couldn't be Boy Scouts. 
and there's a I, I worried for a while that this would have too many characters because you you know you look at like promotional material it seems like there's a lot of characters I'm gonna be real clear I like Emily Van Camp if that's how you pronounce it I I rather liked her on Everwood and I have not watched Revenge, but from the little bit of promo material I watched in order to, I mean, I, I understand that she was cast for this because of her work on Revenge. Yeah, I can see why. I may have to watch that show. I don't think the character was really needed in this. Maybe most of her good stuff ended up on the cutting room floor, but she really doesn't do much of anything in, in this. and. Yeah, other than that, everyone has something to do, and everyone has, like, real good moments. Like, I mean, there, there are a couple of different, you know, badasses who can really fight. And, yeah, they actually do... They get cool stuff to do, and, you know... Falcon joins the, the the cast of superheroes, and he gets stuff to do. You know, they they have some great stuff with him flying. He yeah, and Anthony Mackie is just spot on. You know, he is. You know, whether flying or not, long before we see him fly, he's just he's a lot of fun and. He and Steve are kind of just this war vet kind of, you know, they've been in action, but they're, you know, they're not necessarily looking to, you know, they're, they're willing to fight, but they, you know, there's not necessarily a, it's, an early line of Steve's is actually, if I didn't do this, I don't know what I'd be doing. And that's very much the case. And, and when we first meet Falcon or the, Sam in this, he is... He's working at a VA. He's helping people with... He's, people, he's helping veterans who suffer from PTSD. And it really, you know... Yeah, the, the two characters really share that kind of thing of, you know, having been in war and having, un having witnessed, experienced horrible things. And, yeah, that, that really works out. And everyone, and, and Marie Hill c comes back as well from, from Avengers. All of them have something to do in, in, you know, action scenes and in these big, yeah, it's just, it's it's amazing. Redford. It's it's been said before, but the man really amazing actor. You know, just yeah. It's he's he just he's he's a very determined character. He's he's kind of like a defense kind of guy. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not real great with titles or names or locations or memories in general. But yeah, he's, he's got some kind of high position and he worked with Nick Fury. So, you know, and he is, he is determined, like, you know, he, he literally tells Captain America, I'm going to find out who attacked Nick Fury. And anyone who tried to prevent that will will have to pay the consequences for trying to prevent that. Now, I suppose that more or less... I don't particularly want to single out the different... I guess there's basically like three martial arts badasses. They're all really kick-ass. You know, I don't really want to 
describe them too much, but I will say you you'll remember all of them. I, I should say one of them is George Saint Pierre, and with a name like that, you really do have to be able to kick ass. And he is apparently the UFC better weight from 08 to 13. That's pretty badass. And he apparently, he took this role because he really wanted to have this kind of action movie role. And yeah, <laughs> sign him up for more. He's fantastic. I mean, not every, like, I mean, he, he definitely can't fight. There's no doubt about that. But not every single, like, great fighter can really act. And I would do the, the thing where you cough and then you enter a name, but I can't cough for that long because most people who are really good at fighting and then enter movies can't act at all. But this guy, he's, he's rather good. I mean, they don't... He doesn't have to... Exp he doesn't have to have a ton of range for this role, but, I mean, even relatively simple acting stuff is difficult if you, you know, it, it does take some getting used to and some skill. Now, this was directed by two brothers, the, the Russo brothers, I guess is how you pronounce it, who mostly do TV, but apparently they were, you know, they were given this role, they, this job for this gig because they direct, among other things, community, and the season two finale was sort of a genre parody, and that really showed that they could do this sort of thing, and yet, yeah, excuse me, yeah, they can do this sort of thing. I've never seen community, and I still don't particularly feel like it, because it doesn't, it's not really my kind of humor, at least. But, yeah, I'll definitely sign up for anything else that the Russos direct that that I do have some kind of interest in. And the, the, the script is by the, you know, the guy who did the script for the first one, and, what's it called, for Thor the Dark World, so, yeah, and he does fantastic at it, again. Now, part of the reason that the, that, that so many S.H.I.E.L.D. people are in this is that, unlike, you know, Iron Man and Thor, Captain America doesn't really have a supporting cast. They've mostly died off since the first movie on account of the whole capsicle thing, as Tony Stark put it. And it works really well to have this sort of... Because, like, like I mentioned before, you know, it, well, the first one was very much an army movie. This one is very much a spy flick. And that really is... I mean, when was the last time that America engaged in a army on arm or yeah let's just go with that one army facing another army in in some kind of like straight you know so yeah i mean definitely have world war ii but then after that gets a little iffy then you've got you know maybe america sends in an army but then the enemy fights you know using guerrilla tactics or something so yeah, it, it makes sense that this is now very much, you know, of course Steve is working for S.H.I.E.L.D. and doing this kind of almost spy stuff, because there isn't really too much, you know, that's, that's where he can really do these things. You know, mo most of this stuff today is with this kind of, you know, intelligence gathering and this kind of stuff, you know, drones and yeah. Now, the, this is, you might have some trouble following this if you haven't watched the first, but it's not really 
prerequisite and it also isn't like hypothetical if this was the very first movie in all of the cinematic Marvel universe that you watched you'd be able to follow it fine and yeah there, there'd be stuff you couldn't completely appreciate but you know now when I first heard that this would have some notable DC landmarks I did honestly worry that we were getting into time to blow up the White House territory but without spoiling anything I can assure you that is not the case the there is some stuff with the 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 past there is some you know bridging of the first and this one including a scene which was supposed to be in Avengers of Steve and Peggy Carter, I think was her name. At, and on that, this again, like the first one, we're talking very strong female characters, so that's great. You know, Black Widow is one, and we already knew about Maria Hill. While, you know, Emily Van Camp does not do a whole heck of a lot, she definitely is a strong character, strong female character. Now, the... It's been said about this that it does not take that many risks. I don't know, I... I kind of disagree, but... If, if there is something that I'm currently missing, I will say that I think the, the, the reason that maybe Marvel would be less inclined to take risks for a while is a, a certain element in Iron Man 3. Now, there is... I suppose that might more or less cover it. This does very much delve into S.H.I.E.L.D. We, we find out about the some of the history of S.H.I.E.L.D. and you know we see more of what's you know yeah we, we get more of a, a look into that world. Now these post Avengers yeah the the movies that have come out since the Avengers of course have to explain why doesn't the protagonist simply call on the other Avengers and this one does explain that fairly nicely it's, like I mentioned in the summary, plot summary, basically Steve doesn't know who to trust and is being chased by a substantial force. That's not really something that, say, Tony Stark agreed to. You know, he... It's, it's not the same thing. You know, with Avengers it made sense that all of them came together and fall off this thing, but here it's a bit less, you know, you can't necessarily, yeah, it's, I, I refuse to give away spoilers in, in this video, only in the, in the thoughts video. Now, I, now, yes, the, the, Falcon uh, is the the first mainstream African American superhero. Not the first Af not not the first black. The I, I believe Black Panther precedes Falcon. But yes, the first mainstream African American superhero. And yeah, Mackie does him justice. 
this does have the the wing pack that allows him to fly. It does not. I, I believe I read somewhere that the telepathic powers would also. I wasn't sure that was going to play a role. I wouldn't say it, it didn't. I didn't see anything like that. And the the control of birds, which works well in the comics. Maybe not so much in, in this movie universe. You know, there, there are some things that just, that they need to, you know, steer clear of to ensure that it's still, yeah. Now, let's see, I, yes, the, the, World Security Council, the the Shadow World government of Avengers reappears, and yes, I I suppose that's that's all I'll say for for that one. Now, I think that oh, this does some great stuff with. Steve's adjustment to having been, you know, having thawed up and says, so, you know, literally first scene, he meets Sam and, you know, Sam's like, oh yeah, you're Captain America and, you know, no time wasted explaining what's, you know, what's going on with, with Steve. He just, you know, they, they get to talking about, you know, stuff that he may have, uh, they, they start talking and something comes up that Steve might have missed and he pulls out this little pen, but he's, he's just mentioned that the internet is useful for, you know, catching up on things and then he pulls out not a cell phone, not, of course not a smartphone or anything, just pen, you know, pen and pen, pen and paper and a pen. Words. And that's, that's him, you know, he's still just, yeah, that's what he's used to, and he writes the thing down, we, we see this list of stuff that he's missed, and <laughs> just, yeah, it, it includes things like Disco, the Moon Landing, and Star Wars, so that's, that's, yeah, and, and they have several other th things like that, and they do good stuff with it, they, it's, you know, it's it's not the same as when they did these things in the Avengers because there he, you know, some time has passed and it wouldn't be, it would be predictable if it was on the same level. We have to remember, this is, I, I believe this takes place a year after Avengers, so he's had some time to catch up. And in Avengers, that was pretty much the first time he was spending with other people since he'd been fought up. So, yeah, he was, he was rusty and he hadn't really caught up on the new things. There is this great ongoing, <laughs> you see in the trailer that just before Cap jumps out, he's talking about, you know, Black Widow is trying to set him up with, with someone and that isn't just for that one scene. That goes on, you know, it, it, it's a running thing in, in the film that every so often they'll talk about who he could maybe date. And it's, it's fun and it's charming and, you know, so, sometimes it's genuinely, you know, funny, like a joke kind of thing. And other times it is just this thing of, you know, deep down they are both people, you know. Sure, he's, you know, he was frozen for most of his adult life, and she, you know, she's been killing people for decades. But, well, at least a decade and a half. I guess with her age, it would, yeah. The, the... Underneath it all, they are just human beings, and yeah, it's it's a charming little thing, and and you also have this, as I mentioned before, 
this clashing of personalities of her being very willing to go along with things that, you know, to get the job done, you might say, and him being very, very rigid, very, very strict in his kind of moral compass, you know, he does not really he doesn't really veer too far off from that, and as it should be, both of them affect the other over the course of the film, and yeah, it's a, it's a great little conflict, it's a really good character dynamic between the two, and I think that pretty much covers it. Also, this is indeed darker, like Iron Man 3 and Thor The Dark World. And, yes, definitely, definitely stay after the end credits. And yes, they, there, there's two scenes now, so, so remember that. And, yes. Actually, I suppose, I do want to mention, most of the, you know, there's there's not too much CGI in this. If everywhere they could do it in, you know, for real, they, they actually did it with, with stunts and, excuse me, you know, real, real vehicles and the like. And, yeah, it really makes the action more intense. You can tell this, you know, there's something there. It's not just, you know, it's not a model in, a, in an animation program, you know. And, you know, the animation in many of these movies has been excellent, but this is, you know, something that really benefits from being real. And it's also a movie, Thor the Dark World couldn't have been you know, entirely, that, that needed some, that needed a lot of CGI, but Captain America, it's very, you know, so, so yeah. Now, that actually does bring up, Cap uses his shield more for offense than he did before, still also defense, of course, and the, the action in this is very nicely varied. And there's, the pacing is nearly perfect. Like, the action scenes and the character scenes, I mean, yeah, it's, I think, yeah, Anthony Mackie says that this is more about the story than about the action, but the action is the best you'll ever see, is the best you've ever seen. And I agree with a lot of that. I, it's, it's very much story. And the action is just unbelievable. You're, you're going to remember a lot from these set pieces after, yeah. And, yeah, the, the action, I mean, you've got chases both on foot and with vehicles. You've got people shooting at each other, you know, straight fighting, just, yeah. It's, it's really big, it's really personal, and really dangerous. Like... Something I've seen a lot in recent action movies is that there will be a lot of action without too much consequence because consequences means actually having, you know, setting time aside for that, for dealing with those consequences. So instead they just have a lot of big stuff that doesn't really lead to much. In this, it leads to stuff. Like, it's you know, there isn't really a big fight without one of our protagonists getting hurt or like, you know, something big. It doesn't just, you know, yeah. And the, the, the titular Winter Soldier is just unbelievably badass. I just, yeah, um, <laughs> Every single 
second that he's on screen, he is doing something badass. Every, you know, he's got these really intense eyes, and the, the action itself, you know, the metal arms, he's really good use, the, the strength and the speed. And this is also a movie that really utilizes Cap's speed much more than the first, and from what I recall, also Avengers. They, they did use his strength, but, and this one also, you know, points out he does have, you know, like his senses are extra strong as well. You know, it's not, you know, he's not just faster and stronger, he's also, you know, some of that does, you know, yeah, if, if you, if you get much stronger and faster, you know, your senses will also have to expand to comp, you know, compensate, to follow along, so, yeah. Actually, real quick, the 3D is great. It really makes you feel like you're right there. It's very much an atmosphere kind of thing. You know, think somewhat like Avatar. Not quite that good, but, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't throw stuff at the screen. It never calls attention to itself, but it adds, it adds that extra layer. So you can feel that there's, there's a depth to it. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.